What's up everyone, it's Natalie here and today I am going to be filming a very, very exciting video. I say that about every video, but I am really excited to talk about this one because it is how to start a podcast and I thought it was the perfect time to film this because the Real Real Podcast, which is my podcast, has been up for a year. So March 25th marks its one year anniversary of me posting the first episode, which is just crazy because I have had so much fun with it. What are some good podcasts? So there's this podcast. It's really new. Um, you guys probably haven't heard of it. It's called The Real Real Podcast. Real and then real like R-E-E-L. And it's with me. I am so excited. Hello, I'm starting a podcast. <laughs> Anyways, it has been a year since I launched my podcast and so many people are starting a podcast now. So I thought it was the perfect time to talk about how to start one. I watched a few videos about how to start a podcast, but I really wanted to do a deep dive and tell you guys about my entire experience starting one. And no matter the type of podcast that you're gonna start, this video is going to be helpful. So if you guys want another video similar to this or anything like that, then let me know. But this is gonna be useful, so grab a pen and paper because I'm gonna be giving you guys some really, really, really helpful tips on how to start podcasts in 2020. So like I said, everyone is trying to start a podcast. I have a podcast called The Real Real Podcast. It is where I interview people and I share like the real real, not the highlight reel that social media shows. So I just ask them a lot of questions about how they got to where they are, what are their goals, the ups and downs, the struggles that they've faced, just really having a conversation and, and making you feel like you're in the room. And it's all different types of people. So it's not just super, super, super successful people in tense of like people that started a business or people that are entrepreneurs or anything like that. There is a lot of that and it is heavily focused on productivity and business so I will let you know but there's also other episodes that I have with uh, my friend who is a middle school teacher. I have one with my friend who is a doula. I have one with someone who is just a high schooler that's moving to New York at the end of high school. I have been really really proud of it and I've been so honored to have all of these people on my podcast and I just feel like I'm in a very privileged space where I want to share other people's stories that might not have a platform so it's not only like social media people it's all types of different people. I'm really honored that I get to share their stories. Now I'm going to talk to you guys about how to start one. The first thing that you need to ask yourself is what are you going to podcast about? What is going to be your topic? I feel like for podcasts, you have to have a niche. YouTube, you're allowed to kind of post videos that are kind of all over the place in the same umbrella, but still like a little different versus podcasting. I do feel like you need to niche down. Is your podcast going to be productivity and business focused, kind of like mine is? Is it going to be focused on sports? Is it going to be focused on pop culture? Is it going to be just all about your life and you kind of like a personal diary for you? Whatever it is, kind of having that idea of what you're going to be talking about as a whole, you should be able to categorize your podcast and ask yourself what you're going to be talking about because that's going to be very important. You have to think long term, not just short term. Also, what type of podcast are you going to have? When I ask this question, I mean there's different types of like hosting styles. So are you going to have an interview type podcast, which is similar to mine, where I bring a guest in every single week. There's occasionally I'll do a solo episode, but for the most part, I bring a guest in every single week where I interview them. Mine is never really about me. It's always about the guests that I'm bringing on. There's quite a few podcasts like that. A few of the ones that I'm thinking of. The Real Real Podcast, which is my own. The Skinny Confidential, him and her podcast. It's one of my all-time favorite podcasts. Another one is Armchair Expert. So this one is definitely more of a production. It is Dax Shepard, who he's married to Kristen Bell. Very, very famous. And he always brings on celebrities. Ashton Kutcher is my favorite guest on there. I don't know if you guys know this, but Ashton Kutcher is my dream man. Um, he's perfect in my eyes. Interview style is probably one of the most popular type of podcasts to do. I just think it's easy because you always have something new to talk about since you're always talking about the guests that you have on. The next type of podcast is a solo podcast. This is definitely another way to go, which it would just be yourself. You're not really focusing on bringing on guests, but you're mainly talking about a topic on your own. For solo podcasts, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that yes, you can bring on guests. You can do whatever you want. It's your own podcast, which is great. But for solo episodes, you really have to be comfortable talking about different topics, talking about things on your own in the long run. Like I said, podcasting is for the long haul. You don't want to just make sure that you have enough to talk about for the next four weeks. You want to make sure that you have enough to talk about and constantly like 
making a new conversation week after week so making sure that you can actually talk about something yourself that's not too repetitive is something to think about when you're having solo podcasts some examples of some solo podcasts one of them is thick and thin by katie bilotti she's another youtuber here on the platform she's one of my friends and her podcast is kind of like her personal diary it's really really interesting and something that i haven't really seen that much in the podcast space so she talks about a lot of dating in new york living in new york in your 20s kind of think carrie bradshaw of the podcast world. Another solo podcast is Gold Digger by Jenna Kutcher. This is a huge one. It's always on the top charts of the business and productivity podcast world. Jenna Kutcher is basically the content creation queen. I feel like she talks all about how to build a podcast, how to build an Instagram, how to build a Pinterest, how to build a YouTube, whatever, like anything social media related and digital business related she knows how to talk about and then another solo podcast is on the grow podcast this is another one of my really good friends grace lee i'm gonna have all of these podcasts down below but she actually breaks it down into seasons so this is definitely something else that you can consider she does season one season two season three and she releases them all at once so people can binge listen to them but each season is a different topic so she does have some guests on there for some seasons but a lot of them she just records individually it's just really cool because that way you can kind of categorize your topics and have like five episodes in each topic or whatever that looks like for you but then you can constantly keep talking about new things in a not like all over the place type of way and then the last type of podcast that you could have is co-hosting so co-hosting is obviously when you have more than one host this one is another popular one but the only thing i have to say with this is that if you are doing a co-hosting one just think of this as you are going into business with someone i know starting a podcast is super easy like i will get into um and it might seem like you and your friend can just pick up a mic and start doing a podcast which yes you can can, but if you want to treat it as a business make sure that whoever you're co-hosting with is a good business partner because at the end of the day that is what this is so just making sure that you guys are on track with the responsibilities like who's going to edit how are you going to discuss the idea is your creative vision on the same page do you guys have the same goals for this podcast are you guys both as serious about this podcast how do you guys start monetizing it is it going to be 50 50 things like that you just need to talk about when you have a co-host making sure your schedule is aligned so that you guys can both record at the same time i'm not saying co-hosting doesn't work because there are so many podcasts where there are co-hosts like it's a very 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 popular way of going into it but i just want to let you guys know that think of it as going into business with someone not just starting a podcast with them examples of podcast co-hosts are gals on the go i feel like a lot of you guys know gals on the go uh danielle and brooke they are here on youtube they're also some of my friends here and they have a, such a great podcast i was actually just paused their episode of the podcast to come and record this but they just chat about their lives about anything going on in pop culture it's just a very very casual conversation and makes you feel like you're in the room with them which is really fun and it's a good way to like bounce ideas off each other rather than a solo podcast it's kind of hard to like continue talking when it's just you so it's nice to have kind of someone to like bounce ideas off of and not like you're talking to a wall and then some other examples of co-hosting podcasts is chicks in the office love them they're a barstool sports podcast where they just talk about pop culture they bring on people to interview but it's mainly just like fran and ria that are talking also okay sis they interview people but they are both co-hosts so two sisters that host the podcast and then they bring on interviewers so it's kind of a mix of the co-hosting and the interview style podcast those are all things to think about before you even start so make sure you know what you're going to talk about long term and also how are you going to do this like what's going to be the style of it okay now let's talk about equipment the reason why i think podcasting is popping up all over the place now and every single person is getting into podcasting is because of how cheap it is to start for a youtube channel you need to buy a nice well, you don't need but a lot of people buy a camera that costs them upwards of like five hundred dollars they buy a mic they might buy lighting they might buy a video editing software that costs a lot of money so for youtube for example it's a little bit more of an investment once you start growing in it but for podcasting the investment stays very very low so basically all you need is a mic maybe two mics if you're interviewing someone so as a microphone i have the blue yeti mic this is actually it right here it's really really popular this is like one of the most popular mics i feel like that one cost me about 120 dollars i want to say it's pretty inexpensive having a good mic is very very important that's not even the cheapest one you can actually find a couple for 50 bucks you can find one for 40 dollars you can find some up to probably around 300 dollars if you want really really amazing sound but i do think that with podcasting it's important to have a mic and not just using like your computer mic or headphones which yes you can and don't get me wrong you can start with that but because podcasting is just audio there's nothing else to distract you it's just audio i do think the audio is very very important if you have a video and
and the audio is kind of bad, at least they can visually see what you're doing. But with audio and with podcasting, it's just that. So you kind of want to make sure that you have a pretty good microphone. Another thing that I did buy with my microphone though is two sets of headphones. So if I ever have guests, I can give them one of the headphones and then I have a pair of headphones just so I can make sure what the mic is picking up is good and it's not getting a lot of background noise. But the headphones I bought were only, I think, 30 or $60. I'm going to have everything linked down below, but everything's always linked in my Amazon shop if you ever want to shop it and you don't have this video to reference. It's always linked there and it is that easy to record. So minimal equipment, like literally you don't, you don't need any equipment. It's great. And then a lot of people ask me how I record remotely. So because I do an interview style, I record remotely pretty much every single podcast. I actually did say that this year I was going to only do in-person interviews and then coronavirus came. So I'm back to recording remotely. I do like having in-person interviews because the energy is just a lot different than um, over the internet and it's also the quality is better because it's not over the internet. Um, I just feel like when you're face to face with someone and you're in the room with someone, it sounds more like a natural conversation. Um, but when you're like over the phone or over the internet, it's kind of like people are interrupting each other. It's not as much of a flow. So I do prefer in person, but there are so many ways to do non in person interviews and that way you can connect with so many more people. So if you did want to interview someone, but they were all the way across the country it doesn't matter because you can still record a podcast with them which is so cool the first way that i did it was through zencaster zencaster is a free way to record remotely podcasts it's only audio there's no video attached to it but basically you just send them a link and then they can get into your little room that you're recording in if you will like virtual room and then you hit record and then you're recording there it saves as two separate tracks so you can test out your mic on there you can make sure it sounds good and everything like that it's a great way to record virtually and the good thing is that it does send two separate tracks so you can adjust one person's audio and then adjust your audio as well to make them sound very very similar versus if it's just one audio file if their audio kind of sounds bad but yours sounds good it's still mixed together so you can't individually edit their um their tracks. So that is a really good part about that. The bad thing about Zencaster though, which I've actually seen with a lot of the virtual recordings, is that if I talk and someone else is talking at the same time, the audio gets messed up. It's like, sounds like, like it sounds really weird. You're not interjecting. It's more like they speak, I speak. They speak, I speak. There's no interruption because if you do, you have a chance of getting the audio a little messed up. And then also whenever you are sending files through the internet, I have just noticed that the audio quality for their audio just decreases a little bit. So Zencaster is one amazing way and the pro of that is that there's two separate tracks. So it's really, really easy. Another one is Zoom. Zoom is also free and I know some people say that you can't go over 40 minutes in Zoom. You just can't go over 40 minutes if you have more than two people. So if it's just you and one other person, you can go as long as you want. I actually use Zoom for my consultations, but I've been using it for podcasting as well because you can just record your call and you can do video or you can just do audio. I typically just do audio, but video is nice because then again, you can kind of feel that energy. You can see their facial expressions and it does feel more like a conversation, but Zoom saves it as one audio track. So it's going to combine the two tracks together. So again, if you want to edit theirs and not yours, there's really no way to do that. But it does kind of make it easier because you don't have to line up the audio to make sure that they're at the same exact time. Um, so that I guess is easier with Zoom. But again, if you wanted to edit each individual track, it's not an option with Zoom. And then the last way to do it is actually if you ask someone if they have a microphone and you have a good microphone, if you just ask them to record on their own computer, you guys FaceTime, you have headphones in so the mic isn't picking up like what they're saying. Um, and then you guys both like at the same time, like three, two, one, do a clap so that the audios can sync up and then start talking. And then they send you the audio file so that you have both of your audio files to edit. That's another way. And then the quality is not gone because they're recording on their end instead of having it record through the internet. Editing me over here. I hope that made sense. When I said the clap, I mean, because if you look at the audio track, you can see spikes in volume. So if you clap, it's like a huge spike in a volume. And so when both of you guys have that spike, you can line up the audio tracks. So you know when they're on on, like the same page hope that makes sense okay thanks hope you're enjoying this i know i ramble a lot i'm sorry <laughs> so that's another way which is going to preserve the quality but the bad thing is that 
if the person you're interviewing with maybe isn't the best at technology, maybe the computer is kind of faulty, maybe they kind of messed up something uh, and they mess up, then you just recorded the whole interview and you had no idea that the audio wasn't the best. So you don't really have that control. So that's kind of the negative that comes to that. And now for editing. A lot of people ask me how I edit. There are so many ways to edit. I do not know all of them, but if you guys have suggestions, you guys can comment them down below. The way I edit is actually on Final Cut Pro. So I am a YouTuber, obviously. <laughs> you guys are watching this on YouTube. Uh, I edit my videos on Final Cut Pro, so I already had that software. I don't recommend buying Final Cut Pro for podcast editing if you don't have it already, but I'm just letting you guys know what I use. I use my video editor. I just honestly record a voiceover in there, or I will drag the audio clips and put them into Final Cut and then just chop it up. And it's very, very minimal editing. You can use iMovie, just record the audio file and chop up the audio file. And you can use any type of video editor software that you have. Um, there's even some on your phone that you can use. Like I've used Splice before, which you do have to pay on your phone, but you can do that. You can use GarageBand, you can use Adobe Audition. There are so many different ways to edit. There's also a hosting platform called Anchor, which I will be going into as well, that lets you edit on their software, which is totally free, no matter what device you have on your phone, your computer, Windows, Mac, doesn't matter. Editing is the least of your worries, and the way to edit a podcast, in my opinion, is to very minimally edit it. Basically, don't cut out all of the breaks. Don't make it as choppy as you would a video. I like making my videos pretty choppy. I like making it like quick editing, like it's not long breaks, but in podcasting, you want it to feel like they are in the room, so you don't want the editing to be that choppy. You kind of want it to feel like they're in the room, and this was just a one take and not edited. So that's kind of the goal for podcasting, which is nice. The editing is pretty minimal. As for finding the music and the artwork. So music, which is like your little jingle, your little theme song, you don't need this, but a lot of podcasts have it. And then the artwork, which is your cover art for your podcast. Um, I totally recommend Upwork and Fiverr, just a place for freelancers. You can search if you guys want podcast art or if you guys want a jingle and supporting a small business like that. These are just freelancers trying to make it, you guys. I would definitely recommend searching there. They actually start for so, so, so cheap. I think my podcast cover art was no more than 50 bucks, but I'm pretty sure it started at like $10. Like you can find someone to make your podcast cover art for $10 and they are talented. So I really recommend doing that. You're actually supporting someone that is just an individual. When it comes to freelance stuff like this, I definitely prefer supporting an individual artist. That's just my two cents. And then with music, you can obviously have someone create a jingle for you on those sites as well. If you did want to get licensed music, there are websites where you can just buy the rights to a licensed song. It might cost you a few, like maybe 50 bucks or something like that, 20 bucks, $100, depends on the song. And then you can actually own the rights to it so you're not copyrighted. Um, but you do have to explain like why you are buying the song and explaining that it is for a podcast. So there's different ways to go about it, but. My number one thing that I'm gonna say is going on Fiverr or Upwork and seeing the graphic designers and seeing the musicians on there or the people who make music jingles on there and supporting them. The next is hosting. This is one of the most important ones. So a lot of people ask, how do I get it on iTunes? How do I get it on how do I get it on Apple Podcasts? How do I get it on Spotify? How do I get it on Google Podcasts? The answer to this is Anchor. I am so biased. I love Anchor, but I feel like all the videos I've seen, everyone recommends Anchor. I've never tried anything else, so I can't tell you if it's better or worse than others, but just from what I've seen, I feel like Anchor is the best. Like I literally have zero complaints with it. So basically you make a free account on Anchor, you upload your podcast on there, and then it does take a few days to get approved, but it does get approved very, very quickly. You literally don't have to do anything and it distributes it to every single place where you can listen to podcasts. And just like that, it's so easy. And so from then on, every time you upload it to Anchor, it automatically distributes and it doesn't take that few days. It just automatically uploads to all those different platforms. Anchor just has so many more capabilities. So for example, you can edit your podcast on Anchor. You can take uh, listener messages, like listener can leave you voicemails and you can include them in your podcast. You can add music from Anchor to your podcast if you wanted to do that. You could record on Anchor. But the best part about Anchor, I think, is the money. So you actually can monetize on Anchor. So there are automatically ads that can be placed on Anchor that you have to record, but they give you a CPM. So that's what's similar to YouTube. And a CPM typically is from 10 to like $25 on Anchor, which is great. Uh, and that means cost per thousand. So per thousand listeners, you're going to get that amount. So if it's $20 CPM, every thousand listeners of that ad, you will get $20. So you just insert it into your ad. You can chop it up on Anchor and insert the ad into there, record them on there, and you literally get started with zero listenership. So you can not have, not even have an episode up yet and get your first podcast sponsor and start getting paid on Anchor. And even if it's just a little bit in the beginning, money is money, that stuff adds up. And it's just a really great way to get passive income 
So I love Anchor. That's like, I literally don't recommend anything else. Like I don't know why anyone else would go on something else other than Anchor. I have no complaints about it. And you can also see your analytics on Anchor, which I think is pretty cool. And the next thing I want to talk about is finding a schedule. So find a schedule for your podcast is very, very important. It's when your guests are going to know when they can find your podcast. And it's also just good to have that honestly for accountability. So like YouTube, I definitely think that you should have a schedule, but podcasting I think is even more important for your listeners to know when you're uploading. I upload a podcast every single Monday. Mondays, people know that they will find the real, real podcast and a new episode. I do suggest posting it in the beginning of the week rather than the end because on the weekends, listenership for podcasts goes way down. Like people are not really listening to podcasts on the weekends because I do think the where people listen to podcasts most is on their commute to work, at work, on their commute back from work. When people are listening to podcasts, it's just not on the weekends. So uploading Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I think it's really good because then you give them the whole week to listen and by the time the next week comes around you have a new episode up so that's why i chose monday and with podcasting if you feel like you can't upload every single week maybe pre-record so film like five episodes in one week five episodes in two weeks and just spread those out once a week from there you don't have to upload every single thing in real time i have podcasts pre-recorded that are going to be filled up up until may so i recorded like all my podcasts in february and i had enough for like three months so pre-recording is, is really, really nice. Another thing I wanted to touch on is podcast swaps and finding guests. So podcast swaps is a really, really great way to get your name out there and to show other podcasts similar to yours that they might like your podcast. So I actually do recommend trying to be a guest on other people's podcasts. I think it can only help you reaching out to podcasts that you think are similar to yours and asking them if they wanted to do a podcast swap, which meant that they would be on yours and you would be on theirs. And always explain whenever you're reaching out to anyone if you could be on theirs or they could be on yours kind of explaining it like why they would want that so explaining that your demographics are very similar explaining that you guys have a similar audience and that it's good exposure for the both of you don't just make it be about you don't make it be like oh my god well like i just really want to be on a podcast so can you please be on your podcast like really make it seem as to why they would want you on your podcast instead of having it be all about you and that just goes for any type of ask in life i feel like and in business but when you're talking about podcasts, it's a really good way to look at it. And when it comes to finding guests, a lot of people ask me how I find the guests for my podcast. A lot of times people do email me and they ask me if they could be on my podcast, which kind of going back to don't be afraid to put yourself out there, but they explain to me why they would be a good fit and why, like what their story is and why it'd be helpful to share. So I really, really appreciate when people do that because I'm always looking for guests. So I think people are kind of scared to ask to be on a podcast because they're like, oh my gosh, they don't want me. Like I'm, I'm just going to be annoying them. But you guys, we are looking for guests just as much like that's hard work to find a new guest every single week so do not be afraid to ask your favorite podcast to be on it if you have something to share a lot of them have been my friends a lot of people it's people i know people through someone else some um, there's been an introduction a lot of times i'll just like really really admire someone and reach out to them and be like can you be on my podcast this is why I think that you would be a great fit and it'd be great exposure for you, X, Y, Z. So even as I'm reaching out for other people to be on my podcast, I always paint the picture of like, this is why it will help you. As for marketing your podcast, the podcast algorithm is pretty bad. I don't know if there is an algorithm for Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It's basically if you're not in the top charts, they're not going to really recommend you as much. Like the only algorithm thing that I've seen is that with a bunch of other podcasts it'll show similar podcasts and then like your podcast might be on there so if you guys have similar listeners it's gonna show up but it's still it doesn't give you that many recommendations and that list doesn't ever change so the podcast algorithm is not the best so you're gonna have to do the marketing on your own to be on like to have people find you a lot of podcasting is word of mouth so some tricks that I have learned and that I have either implemented or will be implementing in the future are one, starting a private Facebook group. This has definitely helped because it has kept my listeners in one space. They're very loyal. They're the first to hear about something. So I really love that. And also it's a supportive community where they know that they have things in common with other listeners of my podcast. So they can create friendships. They ask for advice. It's like the most supportive place. And I really, really, really love it. Loyal community, I think has definitely helped because they just feel like they're a part of something, which they are. Like, I just love them so much. Like I love hopping in there and like, talking to them it's like we're just hanging out chatting you know so 
it's a lot of fun um and then the second thing is to have an instagram page so if you have an instagram page for your podcast it's very helpful i would always recommend creating shareable content so don't have it just be like a marketplace where it's just like new episode new episode new episode new episode because who's gonna follow that like you know, you want to have a place, an Instagram that has shareable content that people are actually wanting to follow it because of the content place, not just because they're letting me know when a new episode is. I can turn on my subscriptions for that, but having it actually provide some form of value rather than just letting people know when there's a new episode. And the last like marketing tip that I have is to post your podcast on YouTube. I actually haven't done this yet, but I am planning on doing it this year um, because the YouTube algorithm is pretty good. YouTube actually has an algorithm that I understand that I know and it picks up on keywords and it recommends videos to people. And a lot of people actually listen to podcasts on YouTube. I've spoken to quite a few people, definitely not the majority, but still viewers are viewers, listeners are listeners. So even if you don't have a video attached to your podcast, just uploading the audio with like your cover art and making that a video and doing the SEO and the title and the description and the keywords, it might get recommended to more people. And then even if they found it on YouTube, they might go off and listen to it on Apple Podcasts. So that's something I will be implementing in the future, but that's definitely something that is a better way to do it because the YouTube algorithm works, whereas the podcast algorithm got algorithm is still lacking anyways this was a super 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 long video but i hope that it was helpful because i know so many people are starting podcasts in 2020 especially in quarantine and i feel like now is the chance to start and i want you guys to comment below what your favorite podcasts are if you guys liked any of the recs that i gave let me know those all that i mentioned were a bunch of my favorite ones um I do listen to a variety, but mainly interview style podcasts. So let me know your favorites. Let me know if this was helpful. And if you guys have a podcast, link it down below. You never know who you guys will meet or the listeners that you will find. So I hope that this helped and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.